let's take a look at an example of a variable speed pump versus a single speed pump for the filtration of what I would call a fairly small pool, 12 by 24 foot with an average depth of four feet, about 8,600 gallons or so. Our filtration goal being three times the volume of the pool every 24 hours is approximately 26,000 gallons. That's what we're looking for. This example system has approximately 30 feet of head for the total dynamic head of the system. And we're looking at a single speed pump here that's going to run only four hours per day. 3,450 RPM, this is a one and a half horsepower pump. It's achieving about 108 gallons per minute times 60 minutes times four hours, just under 26,000 gallons. Now let's take a look at that. I'll just verify that and show you the system here. We have two section lines, one inch and a half and one two inch, a one and a half horsepower variable speed pump that we'll be testing, 150 square foot cartridge filter, and then we have a two inch pressure side line that we'll be using and then monitoring the flow through a series of flow meters. So let's go ahead now and try that high speed operation, 3,450 RPM, and we'll take a look at the flow rates and electrical consumption. One oh seven, one oh eight, even one oh eight. Top right corner, two point three two kilowatts, that's two thousand three hundred and twenty watts. Now let's talk about these numbers for a second here. At 2,320 watts per hour, that's 2.32 kilowatt hours of power. Times that by four hours per day, and that's 9.28 kilowatt hours of power consumed per day, times the nationwide average of 13 cents per kilowatt hour, $1.21 per day, about $36.19 per month, or about $3,040 based on an 84-month service cycle. So let's go ahead and run those numbers again, this time using a variable speed pump for the filtration. Instead of running the pump only four hours per day, which is definitely not optimal, we're going to be running the pump 24 hours a day, but this is a small pool, and this, in this example, there's very few features. For example, no salt water system and we're only going to be running the pump at a higher speed for one hour, a medium speed for one hour, followed by about 22 hours at a very low RPM. Now, this specific system that we're talking about does not have a lot of resistance to flow, and as a result, I am able to actually achieve a significant amount of filtration at a very low RPM, 500. On your swimming pool, 500 RPM might not even move any water. It might not be able to overcome the resistance to flow. This is a dynamic number that's a different on every swimming pool. But for my system here, I'm able to run at 500 RPM. And, and in doing so, I achieve about 15 gallons per minute, which is uh, pretty you know, significant for considering it's a very small amount of power. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these calculations here. So again, this is a pretty small pool. We're only going for about 26,000 gallons of filtration in a 24 hour schedule. So we're gonna do one hour at 3000 RPM, one hour at about 1500 RPM, and one hour or 22 hours at 500. What I'm going to show you is 90 gallons per minute at 3000 RPM, 41 gallons per minute at 1500 RPM, and about 15 gallons per minute at 500 RPM. And what that will equal is 27,660 gallons. But let me go ahead and show you those numbers here so you can see them for yourself. So first we'll do a 3,000. Oops. 
to 90 gallons per minute. One thousand five hundred and fifty watts, top right corner, one thousand five hundred and forty watts, or one point five four kilowatts. And again, that's ninety gallons per minute. Let's go ahead and drop that down to fifteen hundred. And just as we expected, 41 gallons per minute. Look at the power consumption though, way down. 258 watts per hour. And again, that's 41 gallons per minute. And now we're gonna drop all the way down to 500. Again, this is very low. Not every swimming pool would even be able to move water, but in this, this example, we can. So that's 500 RPM. Sixteen, seventeen. Power consumption in the top right, a scant 62 watts, very little power for a surprising amount of flow. Again, 16 to 17. My calculation was based on 15, just being conservative. But again, one hour at 3000 RPM, one hour at 1500 RPM, 22 hours at 500 RPM equals 27,660 gallons. So that's actually more then we're pumping with the single speed pump. So we definitely have a beat for filtration, but let's look at power consumption here. So the 3000 RPM test was 1,540 watts. Then one hour at 1500 RPM, which is 262 watts. And then 22 hours at about 63 watts. 1540, 262, 1386 is 3,188 watts, or 3.18 kilowatts, times the nationwide average of 13 cents per kilowatt hour, 41 cents per day. That's about 12.40 per month, or about $1,041.77 over an 84-month service cycle. That is a savings of $1,998 over the single speed, very reduced filtration cycle of only four hours per day, 25,920 gallons, whereas we're getting more filtration over the course of the day, the water is never sitting stagnant, and it costs you substantially less to run the variable speed pump. And for a small swimming pool like this, you're, the, the difference in price between a single speed pump and a variable speed pump is not going to be $2,000. It's probably going to be somewhere between $500 to $1,000 at most, depending on which models that you're looking at. But this is just a good example for somebody with, you know, kind of a smaller swimming pool looking to see, like, is it actually worth it to get a variable speed pump? Or can I just turn off my single speed pump most of the day? Well, you can, and you can actually still get a good amount of filtration, but it's gonna cost you a lot more than a smartly designed variable speed pump filtration schedule, which is going to save you substantially over the service life of the pump. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.